to the floor. Darius McGee, a some player of the year with the basketball, gives it up to the big man Blake Preston. Yeah, we were wondering who would match up with McGee. And freshman answers freshman Colin Porter with the three ball well, of his own. The freshman just stepped up in a semifinal game and just lights out first shot. Big, that's a great indicator of where his mind is today. Back. I'm young enough to remember when freshmen got nervous in games like that's this. Right. Match. Blanton nearly lost the handle. They'll reset with 13 on the shot clock. Comer. Hesitation pulls up off the mark. Richmond, Liberty, one in Lynchburg. It all comes down to this. The winner heads to the A-Sun Championship game on Sunday. Eastern Kentucky controls it. Blanton, who you mentioned just a moment ago, handles the basketball. Their first teamer. They kick it to the corner. Comer, the freshman guard, fires up a three. That's pure. And a good start for the kid out of Indianapolis. Yeah, they like to shoot the three. Look at this. They're jumping right into that full court pressure. We talked about it. They will not stop. They're relentless, working on both ends of the floor. Darius McGee, a some player of the year with the basketball, gives it up to the big man, Blake Preston. Yeah, we were wondering who would match up with McGee. And freshman answers freshman, Colin Porter with the three ball well, of his the, own. The freshman just stepped up in a semifinal game and just lights out first shot. Big, that's a great indicator of where his mind is today. Back. I'm young enough to remember when freshmen got nervous in games like that's this right. match. Blanton nearly lost the handle. They'll reset with 13 on the shot clock. Comer. Hesitation pulls up off the mark. And Liberty secures the board. That will be critical yeah. tonight. Eastern Kentucky leads the country, Matt, in offensive rebounding. It is a huge part of what they do. They had 21 offensive rebounds against North Alabama in the quarterfinal round that led to 20 second chance points. Yeah, they will just send guys. Three, four, and five will just crash the glass every time on every shot. Colin Porter, five quick ones for the Flames. That pass, a little bit too far in front of Isaiah Cozart, and the turnover will give it back to Liberty. Yeah, it was a great hedge by Blake Preston to cause some confusion and then uh, cause a turnover. Take a look at your keys to the game now. Yeah. TNT, you know why they have an explosive offense? Because they can get out in transition <laughs> and cause turnovers to get points, too. That's a huge part of what they do. And then... EK, they what they need to do defensively is not let the other guys get involved. You know, it's like, you know Darius McGee's going to get his shots. If they can hold the other guys down, they'll be in good shape. And no surprise for Liberty's keys, Matt. You have to rebound the basketball. you got to box out with EKU crashing the glass so hard. And then protect the ball. They also love to cause steals and turnovers. And talking with A.W. Hamilton, and that three finds Colin Porter, and he is having <laughs> himself one heck of a night already. Seven straight points for the yeah. freshman out of Ashland, Kentucky. I know you got to guard Darius McGee, but you better got to guard Colin Porter, too. Blanton working on Vincent. Vincent, one of the better defenders in this league. Gives up a little size to Blanton. He puts oh. a little shoulder into him, creates that space. And shows you that soft mid-range touch. Yeah, big body uses it so well. That time, good little little body push off to kind of get create space. Soft touch. Raston holds, hands off to McGee. Pulls up for three, off the mark, the rebound. Rabbi Moreno and a foul called on Joseph Vinzan. Look at Porter knifing to the hoop for yeah, two yeah. of his seven. Yeah, you see them there on the on the back cut. And here's Blanton doing what he does best. He gets it that deep, and he's tough to stop. The Porter's hit a three. He's hit a little 10-foot runner. And then you saw him hit that backdoor cut to the lay-in. Blanton again. Yeah. Getting to the rim. Oh, my goodness. Gets the friendly roll. When he gets going downhill, he is so tough to stop. Yeah, he's got great handles. And, man, just his body, he is just strong and knows how to use that body to his advantage without drawing offensive fouls. Eastern Kentucky putting Cooper Robb on McGee off the bat. Good fight inside as Blake Preston lays it in for two. Really nice touch by the big fella. He got shoved and sort of sort of heading out of bounds. Ball loose on the deck. Goes out of bounds and it will stay with EKU. This crowd is into it. These teams are into <laughs> what it. What an environment. Man, this is, this feels like a game that has so much
much on the yeah, line. It sure does. Conference semifinal, packed arena, two great teams. Isaiah Cozart will check out. Darden Capiti comes in. 6'10 junior out of Kosovo. Meanwhile, the Flames will bring in Shiloh Robinson. He'll match up with Blanton. Get a little more size. A little more size. I mean, you can see they're just going to run everything through Blanton. Spin. Tries to free himself. Get it back out to Comer. Open look for Moreno. That rims off. Fight for the rebound, and it's taken by Blanton. There's your offensive board, and Moreno nearly losing the handle. Rob now with the pull up in the lane. That's pure. And you see what can happen if you give Eastern Kentucky second chances. That time Capiti, all he could do was get a hand on it. He kept it alive. They recover it. Ends up at two points by Cooper Rob. Despite Eastern Kentucky's success on the offensive glass, Liberty's been the one team they have not been able to find success against. As McGee pulls up, that one rattles out. And Liberty... Takes a page out of that EKU playbook and taps it out for a second opportunity. Porter in the corner, 12 on the shot clock, trying to spin on Comer. Feeds it into the big man, Preston, who draws the foul. Wow, really great feed to find Preston in there. Man, Porter is just looking so good. Handling the ball and scoring. 15.38 to go in the half. We're all tied for yeah. in our backyard here. Blake Preston at the free throw line, leaves that one short. Preston struggled at the strike this season. Shooting 43%. Has one more coming. That one off the mark, so he missed them both. Blanton takes the handoff. Liberty keeping Shiloh Robinson on him. Blanton, the first team all A Sun performer. They go inside. Capiti over the top of Preston got it to rattle home. Darty Capiti played well here in Lynchburg back on the 11th of February. Nine points off the bench in that contest. He averages only four and a half a game. Yeah, he, he makes good decisions. He'll get him touches down in there. Preston takes it right around him for the flush. Man, the big guy's playing out on the floor. Preston goes from half court all the way for the flush. Comer has oh, that one to and take it away. Man, Porter McGee got on it. the move, weaving through traffic, lost it, got it back. Porter spots up, open triple, well off the mark. Preston secures it and they'll reset. Robinson driving hard, up under, no. Preston, the kid doesn't fall. Blake Preston very involved here early on against the Bigs of Eastern Kentucky. Going for the glass offensively. Now Moreno fucking the foul. Moreno so dangerous from beyond the yard, that time driving it to the rim as you see the dunk from Preston a moment ago. Yeah, full head of steam. Those aren't goes flying by and Blake with the big time finish. But that's the danger of Eastern Kentucky. You get a big play down there. They're right up on you offensively. Yeah. And there was a little bit of a mismatch. Moreno saw a lane and got himself to the free throw line here. Short uh, got his own miss. And they're going to get McGee, I believe, on the foul. They, that is who they whistle. I mean, Matt, we talk about boxing out. Yeah. I mean, that on a free throw, that, that just can't happen. Flames have got to be better than that. Almost 18 and a half offensive rebounds per game over their last five contests for EKU. And now another foul called against the Flames. That'll go on Isaiah Warfield. You think back to the second half in the last meeting between these two teams. Liberty got in serious foul trouble did. and quick. Put EKU in the bonus very early in that half. And the Flames fortunate that... It didn't end up hurting them worse. Yeah, they really had no answer for Blanton, and guys were trying, but fouling, and the Liberty found a way to pull it out. He lost the handle. Looked like he was ready to launch. Now drives, takes a little contact, couldn't finish the layup. Blanton on the move. Kicks to the corner. Walker now to Rob. 
Walker now will launch the three. The freshman left it short. And Porter pulls the rebound. Walker and Comer, the two freshman guards, the best friends out of Indianapolis. Talk yeah. about a duo. The two-for-one package That's deal right there. They got two good ones. Porter again open for three. Left it short. Had a couple of clean looks. Yeah. Yeah, he can he can take an extra split second there. They're giving him space. He doesn't need to rush his shot. Land drives and kicks another three ball from the corner. That one's pure. Leland Walker hits it and turns and looks at that Liberty bench. Yeah, see, that's nice when you've got Blanton running the point. Like you, you get guys like Rob and Walker spotted up on the wing or in the corner. McGee tries to answer. That was way off the mark. Chase down. Rob comes out of the pack with it. And now a foul going against Liberty. Kyle Road with the contact. The Flames have had some clean looks from beyond the arc. Here in the last couple of minutes, have not been able to knock him down. Just one of six from three thus far. Yeah, and you can see the game plan. I mean, they're going to do whatever they can do to kind of smother and wrap up Darius McGee, and they're going to force other guys to hit shots. And that's kind of what I made my key. You know, Eastern Kentucky, do what you can do on Darius, but it's the other guys that make Liberty so tough when you get two or three of them in, in double figures. Now, Liberty has missed its last six shots. They trail by five. Brody Peebles, Zach Cleveland checking into the game for the Flames. Deshaun Jackson, meanwhile, in for the Colonel. Rob on the wing. Gives it back to Walker with the three just a moment ago. Driving, pulling up over the top of McGee. That's good. Yeah, Walker hit a cor uh, corner three. This time... Little penetration, 15-footer. First ever four-star recruit to commit to EKU. And now, Robinson lost the handle, a late whistle. And they're going to get that one on John Yukamato. His first foul. Cozart has checked back in for EKU. McGee had that one poked away. A.W. Hamilton says Cooper Robb is our best perimeter defender, and we have seen that on display thus far as he has smothered Darius McGee. Yeah, I, I thought maybe they'd go with Comer or somebody, but Robb has really done a great job so far. Remember, Robb was not in that last right. meeting between these two. He was out with an ankle injury, missed a couple of games. They are thrilled to have him back on the floor. Yeah, not only for his shooting, but for his senior leadership and just his toughness. Donald Robinson will try the three ball. That's off the mark. And the Flames have gone stone cold. Missed their last eight shots. Rob, the quick triple at the other end. That goes down. There it is. They're pushing that ball quickly in transition. Quick shot in, the, in transition early in the shot clock. But they trust each other. In check and also shooting them shoot really well themselves Emily Austin hanging out by that Liberty huddle Emily yeah Richie McKay said we're letting them dictate everything on both ends of the floor that's just not us Kyle Rowe making sure his voice is heard even though he's not in the game right now let's go make a turn right here guys McGee pulls up three ball barely drew iron is he almost they never had the handle on that one as he rose up to shoot it he's been held silent thus far 0 of 6 from the field yeah, it's interesting because the two things that I think every Liberty was worried about, the offensive rebounds and the turnovers are not what's hurting them. Yeah. It's EKU's burning hot shooting. Yukamato puts it on the deck. That's a walker who's gotten off to a good start in this game. Now into the big fella Kozar working on the freshman Zach Cleveland. And just too strong. Isaiah Kozart, 6'7", 240. That dude is a load, and he gave you a little glimpse of it there. Yeah, Cleveland, they didn't double. Liberty didn't double. Kozart was really patient, used that body. Backed him in. Nice finish. 
Nothing coming easy for Liberty on the offensive yeah, end. They are really chasing Darius McGee and also Brody Peebles over there on the wing. McGee inside to Vincent. He gets that one to go off the window and looks like he might tweak the ankle on the landing. Yeah, he came down awkwardly. I see Zay Warfield getting up off the bench. And Dan kind of trying to walk it off. Yeah, he's, he's grimacing. He's grinding his way through it. And go right back to Cozart. Left it short. Robinson pulls the board. And they're going to get Vincent out of yeah. this ball game. On the landing of the shot, I'm not sure if he landed on somebody's foot or just came down awkwardly, but having a hard time walking it off as he makes his way to the bench. If we can get a look at what happened here. Yeah, it's a great pass. Hard to tell. Yeah, his foot kind of got caught on Yukamato, and I think when he came down, he just couldn't land. And he's had the locker room. Yeah. He and trainer Aaron Schreiner. I mean, he was running, so that's a good sign. And they go tape it up. Yeah, they'll probably tape that thing tight, and we'll just have to grimace through the pain. That's not easy. Preston There's one of those the handovers taken away. The pass ahead. Jackson, high off the window. No, the oh, ball my. is up, and no, they wave yeah. it off. Pose art over the top of Brody Peebles, yeah. and they wave off the shot. Brody Peebles, great decision right there. It's the only thing he could have done was box out because Kozart was way up over top of him. And that's number two on Kozart, which could be very important as we move forward in this game. But you see the danger. That is what EKU wants to do. Get down on the defensive end, poke it away, off to the races. They don't finish, but that, that's, that's right up their alley. So they get Kozart out of the ball game. Capiti comes back in. And again, like you said, Matt Capiti's been effective. Yeah. Last game uh, here, Kozart got in a little bit of foul trouble. Warfield. This is the Kyle Rowe. Porter with it. Get on the shot clock. Porter drives, scoops. No. The rebound to Moreno. And here comes Eastern Kentucky. They really push the ball up so quickly. Get that defense back on its heels. Yeah, they're smart. Try to run. Don't have it. Pull it out. Regroup. Run some offense. Lanton through this guy. Has Kyle Rowe on him now. Kicks it out. Moreno thought about the three. Still thinking about it. Yeah. Five on the shot clock. Comer, is he aware? Step back, three ball. Oh, my. oh wow. Tayshawn Comer, big time bucket. And EKU goes up 13. Man, what poise. The Colonels did not panic, made the extra pass. Comer took his time, made it count. A.W. Hamilton said, we're better now than the last time we played Liberty because our young guards are better. The other end, that three ball off the mark. Warfield can't connect. And right now, Liberty looks lost on the yeah, offensive you're, end. You're playing into EKU's hand. Get Colin Porter on a foul. Kind of taking that step back from Comer to beat the shot clock. Yeah, tough shot. Drove Porter in really hard. Big step back beyond three. He back in for Liberty. He has been held scoreless thus far. Homer got stuck, nearly threw it away. Fortunate, Blanton able to chase it down. Now he goes to work, driving through the lane and drawing the foul. So Blanton will head to the line for a couple. And right now, the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky, I mean, they're in control. They are in total control. Defensively, the floor. yeah, I mean, defensively, they are just making Liberty kind of take shots that they don't want to take, and, that, and that's a sign of a good defense. And then offensively, man, they are just playing confident, spreading the ball around, and attacking. One more coming for Blake. 70% free throw shooter on the year. Missed them both. Kyle Rowe pulls down the rebound. Rode has yet to attempt a shot in this game. McGee, so he hasn't scored. Drives it to the rim there. Misses the layup with the left hand. Point blank range, he doesn't fall. Rob at the other end. Fires a three. That's 
off the mark. Well, you don't have to think back too long for the last time Darius McGee got shut out in a half. It was the last regular season game of the year as people can't connect. McGee was held scoreless against Queens. Much respect to them. This EKU team is not Queens. I don't know if you can hang in a ball game if McGee's not getting points for you. That's knocked out of bounds and will get us to a timeout. 7.34 to go in the first half. All EKU thus far. Too far. Yeah, uh, again, the, the Liberty defense I'm not too worried about. It's offensively, these last few possessions, they've really looked out of sync. Liberty's made one of their last 14 shot attempts. And obviously, they need to get Darius going, but other guys have got to be confident. Inside, Robinson. Misses the layup. The Flames have missed from three. They've missed from two feet. They can get nothing going offensively. Comer, a little push off, and they'll get him for the offensive foul. times now this season we've seen Liberty go through an offensive low like yeah, this other right. than that Queens game we mentioned a little bit earlier yeah again they fought their way out of that one they, they've had that experience in their back pocket road open three that's yeah. good boy did they ever need that there we go that's huge that's what you want out of your senior leader guy stepped up knows the team needs a basket that was huge by Paolo Blanton Sizing up Shiloh Robinson, and Robinson whistled for the foul. Yeah, it is a really tough thing to guard if you're Liberty. You know, you got Blanton running the point, who at any moment can use his body to penetrate like he did right there. But that frees up guys like Rob and Moreno yeah. to get out on the wings and spot up to, for kickouts. Joseph Benzant checks back in. Good to see him in. He left earlier in the game with what looked like an ankle injury. So you have to make that decision on Blanton. We've seen Benzant guard him, yeah. but he's, he's smaller, right? You've seen Robinson try to match up with him. Bigger, maybe not as quick. It's kind of a pick your poison situation. Yeah, and I think you do like people do with Darius. Like you just mix it up. You see who maybe is having some success and you ride with that guy. Or if he's still scoring, you just give him different looks and you just try to bother him all night. But he's not a guy, you're not going to stop him. You just got to make it difficult for him. It's one of two free throws to fall. This is not a particularly good free throw shooting team in EKU this season. And now a whistle away from the ball. And they're going to get that one on Deshaun yeah, Jackson. Deshaun Jackson kind of got locked up there with Vincent after he set the screen. The sixth team foul on EKU. Colin Porter scored the first seven points of the game for Liberty. Driving on Moreno here. Pulls up. Too strong. And a foul. That's going to go against Walker, who kind of undercut Joseph yeah. Vinzan. Yeah, but Danny with that ankle, man, he went in there, found a lane, got in there, and tried to re you know, get the offensive board, but got his legs taken out. I mean, that's what the Flames need to do. Again, if your shots aren't falling, keep being yourself, but if you can get yourself to the free throw line, get some points that way, and again, you don't need to panic. You've got a long way to go. You just got to keep pecking away. Just stay tough, get some stops. And then if you're EKU, don't send him to the line. Yeah, right. Play good defense. And Dant misses the free throw. Liberty now 0 of 3 at the free throw line. Blanton and Dant on him now. Jackson drives into traffic, lost the handle, but Cleveland couldn't grab it. It deflects off his hand and will stay with EKU. Thank <laughs> you. 
Turtles fortunate to keep possession. Yeah, Darius poked it away. He just leaves it not quite able to corral it. Trying to go to Blaine. Working on the smaller Van Zandt. Now going to back it out. Moreno fires the three. Off the mark. Offensive rebound for Rob. And that late whistle. They get him for a little shove in the back. It wasn't much. But they thought he just got that forearm into the back of, who was that thing? Yeah, Darius McGee, McGee? Just, Yeah, just as he was kind of going up for the rebound. Again, it wasn't much, but as a player leaves Boy, his really feet. Wasn't much. Yeah, it doesn't take much, though, to kind of. So a break for the Flames, certainly. McGee gets his first point of this ball game. It started 0 of 7 from the field. Let's see if this gets the ace on player of the year back on track. Well, one thing you know about Darius McGee, he's unfazed. He's unfazed when he's hottest as lightning, and he's unfazed when things are a struggle. He's just a fierce competitor. He'll work himself through this. This crowd getting back yep. into it. Blank oh, they got Ben Smolich and Water on him. Cleveland comes to help. Cross-court pass, nearly thrown away, nearly picked up by Ben Zant, and out of bounds. They say he'll go to EKU. Kyle Rode arguing the official. Yeah, he was saying in bounds and it hit off of him. <laughs> and the official's part of the court, so they thought he was still alive. <laughs> As it is, he <laughs> keeps it. Ten on the shot clock. Walker. Drives, pulls up, rims off, and fighting for the rebound yeah. is the freshman Cleveland. Man, Capiti was going hard for that. Cleveland, really nice box out and rebound. Man, you got three guys trying to, trying to free himself. Those baseline nice. throws it away. Too much dribbling and a bad decision. Yeah, Liberty needs to move the ball through the pass, not as much dribble, Matt, like you said. You got the sense Darius McGee wanted to launch one and light the fuse on this building, but that was not the time. Blanton now has it poked away and stolen. Porter kicks to the corner. Road open three. Too strong. Tapped out, and the offensive board for the Flames. Porter now through traffic. Through the hands of Benzani. Gets it back to a hectic possession that ends in a Porter layup. <laughs> It was frantic. Everybody lost Kyle Porter. Takes it right to the rim for the easy lay-in. I don't know if that's the way Richie McKay would draw <laughs> up the offensive poise. It's a long game. Moreno. The three KU you don't Comer. need to get frantic either. Right. Run good offense. Comer hangs, gets it to Capiti. Now he drives. To the right hand yeah. and gets the friendly roll. Yeah, he likes that little hook. You know, the use of the pivot back to the strong hand. That's two of those tonight that he's had with that little four or five foot hook shot. Isaiah Kozart picked up two early fouls, so he's been on the bench quite a bit here in the first half. Yeah, and Capiti's done a real good job coming in off the bench. Wild shot by Warfield, well off the mark. Yeah, I don't know if Capiti got a, a piece of that. But EKU also a very good shot blocking team. That 20th in the country. Yeah. In shot blocks. They go back in the post. Yeah, single coverage to Blanton. Shoots up and over the top of Cleveland. That doesn't fall. And McGee pulls the rebound. McGee rises up for three. And that's pure. This crowd's been yeah. waiting for that. They've been waiting for that. Darius has been waiting for that. And let's see how quickly Cooper Rob gets back <laughs> in this ballgame. Well, again, he can't use thinking the same thing. Okay, he got one. He's going to get some. But the longer we can keep him down, the better. Blanton. Yeah, he's so strong. strong. Ball. Just so strong. Able to clear Warfield out of his path. And Isaiah ends up picking up the foul. You know, we were talking before the game, we would have sworn that Devontae Blanton was yeah. 245, <laughs> 250. And they're like, wait a minute, he's listed at 214? He's he just, is not nearly as big as he plays now. As I know, he plays like he's 240, man, because he's just a beast. Like a fullback coming yeah. through, the, through the line there. But Liberty 
you know, they've tried Benzan on him and Warfield and Shiloh Robinson. And again, you got a great player like that for EKU, Darius McGee for Liberty. You just have to throw different looks at him. You got to just commit to a 40 minute effort, even though you know they're going to score some points. Blanton has seven tonight. That leads the way for EKU. Cleveland, and get Liberty into the offense. Behind the back dribble. Now it's a clear pass to the bucket, and he lays it in and draws the whistle. Yeah, I don't know why Capiti went chasing him way out to the top of the key. He was daring him. Yeah. To take it to the rim. It's like he's guarding him so hard out there, and Zach Cleveland sees the wide open lane. Great decision, great finish. The freshman out of normal Illinois goes to the line and converts on the three point play. Yeah, really good play by Zach Cleveland right there. You've got on Liberty's side 12 points from true freshmen tonight between Cleveland yeah, and Porter. They have been huge. When not really so many others have struggled. And, and now Capiti pick up another foul. Yeah, Zach Cleveland over there. Pete Capiti gave him a little three. show. Yeah. That's just emotions right there. And they may review this. Seeing things that look more yeah. to play on the ball that yeah. were, were flag have been flagrant ones. This yeah, season. I guess I don't know. I'm all for, for you know tough play in the context of the game. That I don't know. I, I saw it differently, but I'm not the guy who strikes Matt. Porter all by his lonesome lays it in. 11 first half points for Colin Porter. Blanton spins the oh. Blanton with the rejection. McGee the cross court heave. Rowan walks into a triple. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? <laughs> the Burnley roll. What a huge shot. That's his second three that the senior leader, Kyle Rowe, did not hesitate. Nearly stolen away. It'll stay with EKU with 16 on the shot clock. Yeah, I think Kyle, deflect, Kyle Porter deflected it. Cleveland on one end. The Man. freshman with the denial. Fantastic defensive play. And then the find to Kyle Rowe, who got the friendly roll on the home rim. Well, look, it takes a lot of energy to make a comeback like the Flames had. Comer pulls up. Oh, he is so good with the ball in his hands. He's got eight. He sure is. Now, Liberty needs to settle down. They made a valiant effort to kind of get this game back respectable. You just got to get into halftime and regroup. Cleveland looking for help. McGee, open three ball. Left it short. Can't count on the friendly roll every time. That's as clean a look as he's had all night. Blanton takes the hand off. Full head of steam. Too strong. Fight for the rebound. Vincent comes away with it. Porter. Drive. Looking for help. Finds McGee. 12 on the shot clock. He'll back it out. Trying to get a little ball screen here. Splits to the Benders. Pull up three. Bang! And the Flames go in front. Comer tries to answer. Gives it up to Moreno. Oh! And silences the crowd. Big time triple heading to the break. With point two, all it can be is a tip. And so that's exactly what the Flames will do. So Liberty down by as many as 13, clawed their way back. Now just two at the break, but what a first half on the road from Eastern Kentucky. They were fantastic.
in half number one. And our Emily Austin standing by with A.W. Hamilton. Coach Hamilton, you guys led by as many as 13. How do you contain the emotions of such an emotional roller coaster in this semifinal game? We're okay. Look, we handled a really good punch. They handled our punch. It's a 40-minute game. We'll be just fine. Last time you were in this building, you, your game plan for Darius McGee was pray. It seemed like you did a pretty good job. You have to be satisfied with how you guarded him. Yeah, we're doing a good job on him. Our help side defense has still got to be better. All right, thanks Thank for you. your time, Coach. Guys, back over to you. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Yeah, they should be thrilled holding McGee to just eight points, most of those coming in the latter moments of the half. All right, when we come back, we'll get you caught up on that other semifinal game. You're watching this a Sun semifinal on ESPN+. Plus. I save my shrimp tails and jars under my bed. You don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm Personal Price Plan. It just helps you create an affordable price. Oh. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. A ballet studio, an architecture firm, and homemade barbecue sauce. They're called small businesses, but to the people who build them, there's nothing small about them. That's why at T-Mobile for Business, you'll save more than a thousand bucks versus Verizon. And with price lock guarantee, we'll never raise your rate plan. So you can keep your focus on toe turn and making sure the sauce is extra spicy. At T-Mobile, there are no small businesses. Everything you love from ShopRite is now on your phone, on Instacart. Get free delivery on your first order. Just between us, you know what's better than mopping? Anything. At the end of a long day, it's the last thing I want to do. Well, I switched to Swiffer WetJet, and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one, so it's ready to go when I am. The cleaning solution actually breaks down dirt and grime. And the pad absorbs it deep inside, so it prevents streaks and haze better than my old mop. Plus, it's safe to use on all my floors, even wood. So for wet jet, so worth it. Best decision ever. Get $10 off for a limited time. Every March, Jersey Mike's turns money from subs into charitable donations. And March 29th is Jersey Mike's annual day of giving, where 100% of sales are donated to local charities. And to kick off all that giving, Peter gave me an apron. I'm honored. Looking good, Danny. We've got subs to make, though. Yeah. Now I know why you gave me the apron. Yeah. <laughs> Join us Wednesday, March 29th, for Jersey Mike's Day of Giving. Be a sub above. <coughs> this cough. <coughs> this will help. Vicks Vapor Rub? Vicks Vapor Rub's medicated vapors go straight to the source of your cough, so you can relieve your cough to breathe easier. Vicks Vapor Rub, fast acting cough relief. Rangers. Savannah Jet Flyers and Scores. Bruins. Get ready for the rush. Saturday on ABC and ESPN Plus. Back to Liberty Arena halftime. Eastern Kentucky on top of the Flames, 36-34 in this A Sun semifinal. Alongside Paul Naskin, I'm Matt Warren. You heard AW Hamilton say it. They took a punch. Yeah. They delivered a punch. I mean, we expected this game to be tight. I don't know that we expected such a wild swing in that first half, but the Flames simply could not buy a bucket. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they say it. Basketball is a game of runs, and, yeah. and both teams kind of hit some shots early. And then, man, EKU was just clicking, getting stops and, and running them out, getting baskets. And, man, things will look bleak, but, but the Flames hung in there and, man, made a run of their own to make it a great game so far at the half. Should be a great finish. All right, let's get to some of the A-Sun awards that were handed out this past week. Darius McGee, we mentioned, player of the year for the third straight year in the A-Sun. Stroud, defensive player of the year. Jalen Black, great year for one of the great stories in the conference in Stetson. Now, I do want to say this, Naz, that defensive player of the year honor, yeah. A.W. Hamilton took that personally. <laughs> he said Isaiah Kozar, yeah. in his mind, was far and away the best defensive player in this conference. That's always such a tough one it is. to and, judge. And, and again, a shot blocker like Kozar, I mean, he certainly could have been that selection, but um, and, you know, again, there are some of the single awards but you know Blanton making first right. team and you're seeing why man he is just having a great first half here for EKU. Now right, with some news and notes from around the world of college basketball tough break for Tennessee as they lose Ziegler to an ACL as uh, they're you know you hate to lose anybody much less right as you're getting ready to head into the postseason. Mike Bray you see him getting uh, yeah. the, his last home game there in Notre Dame and how about Antoine Davis 
closing in on Pete Maravich's points record, and he's also... That's right, the guy who has the most threes the of all most time. All-time three-pointers. <laughs> Second to him would be one Darius McGee, <laughs> That's who we're right. watching in this ball game, but a great career nonetheless at Detroit Mercy for Antoine Davis. All right, when we come back, some first-half highlights from this one, stats as well, and we'll get you caught up on that other semifinal game going on in Kennesaw State. Wherever your company goes, Mercury is there with banking products like checking and savings accounts, debit and credit cards, wire transfers and financing, all designed to scale with your company. Love from ShopRite is now in your phone on Instacart. Get free delivery on your first order. Hi, I keep my home fresh with Febreze Fade to Five Plug. And I use this. Febreze has a microchip to digitally control how much scent is released so it doesn't fade. Oh, does mine have a microchip? Uh -uh. Oh, Febreze smells first day fresh for 50 days. <laughs> That's a shockingly long time. <laughs> Febreze also has a refill reminder light. It even reminds you to refill it. So I never miss a day of freshness. Your home is so fresh. <laughs> Upgrade to Febreze Plug. You ready for an adventure? The Mandalorian new episode streaming Wednesdays. Introducing new sweet and savory crepes. Whether you like the flavor of cinnamon bun after sunset. Or prefer to wake up to a little eggs and bacon. Day or night, it's always time for crepes. For a limited time, buy one, get one free. With five flavors that are delicious any time of day. Only from IHOP. Download the app and earn free food with every order. Welcome all, Commander. The most advanced vehicles are the ones that prepare you for everything. Kia, movement that inspires. In March, we move even faster. Push through each round together. Don't let up till a conference champ is crowned. That's our move. The ACC, SEC, and Big Ten Championships, Sunday on ESPN. Halftime at Liberty Arena. Eastern Kentucky leads by a basket over Liberty, 36-34. And now we talk so much about the rebounding. We talk about the stars in this game. Really, the rebounding, we've seen Liberty stay right there with them. Like, that hasn't been a big separator. But we have seen the Flames, and Darius McGee in particular, are one of our players to watch, that has struggled to free himself from what's been a really good EKU defense. Yes, yeah, stat-wise, Liberty's doing the job. But, yeah, it's been the cold shooting that's been kind of their Achilles heel in this first half. They've manufactured some points. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they need Darius to come alive. It's always fortunate to be as close as they are that's here. Let's right. take a look at some of those stats from the first half. Speaking of the cold shooting, we'll highlight that here first. McGee, 2 of 10 from the field in the first half. And I believe there was some indecision. You yeah, saw I was going to say, not only was the shots not falling, they weren't really Liberty-type shots. Yeah. They were kind of settling for shots instead of really working for great high percent. Well, we saw some Devontae Blanton-type shots. That's uh, one right it. there. It usually involves a lot of contact. Dude is strong. That's right. And he had a great first half. Seven points, five rebounds. He was also able to get himself to the free throw line. Yeah, hit a couple mid-range. Oh, he was running the point, dishing off sometimes, but yeah, everything was running through him. But the start for Colin Porter scored the Flames' first seven points, finished with 11 points in the first half. His career high is 16. Yeah. He had the best probably, I'd say the best half of his career. I think, I think EKU said, let's put the freshman on display and see if he folds, and he did not fold. He answered the bell, 11 
first half points kept them in it. Taking a look at the first half stats presented by Carter Bank and Trust. The rebounding, that's where you go right away. That's the one to watch, and Liberty doing a good job on the board. Yeah, they're right there, but the thing they were worried about was EKU's offensive rebounds. They've only given up three of those, which resulted in only two second-chance points, and the Flames have taken the turnovers and used it to their yeah. advantage. They've got nine points off turnovers. So, again, Flames doing the job. A great game. EKU is running their stuff. We are in for a great second half. Man. It should be a great finish. I will right, we'll hear from Liberty head coach Richie McKay in just a moment. Liberty trailing EKU by two. Wherever your company goes, Mercury is there with banking products like checking and savings accounts, debit and credit cards, wire transfers and financing, all designed to scale with your company. Do you believe in magic in a young girl's heart? How the music can free her whenever it starts and it's magic. Do you believe in magic? That's me before Dawn Power Wash. Soaking, scrubbing. That's life. Was life. Now Power Wash gives me the power of an overnight soak in minutes. I'm sorry, minutes? With three cleaning boosters not found in traditional dish soaps that help break down, loosen, and lift away food and grease. So much faster. Just spray suds on. No water needed till rinsing. But for mess, let the suds sit a few minutes before wiping. Even cleans. The grill. Well, thank you. It's more than soap. It's power wash. Perfect pairs. Some are obvious. Some, not so much. And some are just, yeah, like these guys. The best pairs, they're better together. Like Hulu and Disney Plus in a new bundle. Look at us teaming up. Perfect. We're so good together. Iconic. Meant to be. We're always better together. All for just $9.99 a month. Every March, Jersey Mike's turns money from subs into charitable donations. And March 29th is Jersey Mike's annual day of giving, where 100% of sales are donated to local charities. And to kick off all that giving, Peter gave me an apron. I'm honored. Looking good, Danny. We've got subs to make, though. Yeah. Now I know why you gave me the apron. Yeah. <laughs> The GMC Sierra with hands-free driving. Yeah, it rocks. Step up to GMC with 2.9% APR for five years and no monthly payments for 90 days on Sierra Light Duty models. Welcome back to Liberty Arena. About to tip off the second half of the semifinal game here with head coach Richie McGay. Coach, tell me about you guys were down 13. You guys were able to claw your back your way back into this game. How was your team able to stay calm and composed during that offensive drought? Uh, I think we've had some uh, challenging moments throughout the season, and uh, our schedule's prepared us well for a game like this. They're really good. This is this is a fun atmosphere, and it's college basketball, March Madness. So I'm proud of our guys. I think they're responders and. Hopefully we can continue to get better in the second half. Two freshmen, Colin Porter and Zach Cleveland, with some big plays in that first half. How much did those plays impact and change the momentum of this game? Yeah, Zach came in and did great. And we've seen that from Colin all year. So uh, they've got some good freshmen, too. So let's see. Uh, let's enjoy the second half. Okay. We will. Guys, back over to you. Yeah, I appreciate it. It should be a fantastic <laughs> second half of basketball. Yeah, I mean, you got Col Comer and Walker on yeah. one side, a couple of freshmen. Porter and Cleveland, Cleveland on the other making plays. We're seeing youth really step up in well, yeah, one of the, the biggest of moments. I mean, Blanton and, and, and Rob, Kyle Road. Yeah. How about the two big threes he hit? Yeah, great first half. All right, let's check in on that other game quickly before we get back to action here. Lipscomb, Kennesaw State. Lipscomb shot 28% from the field in the first half of this one. Snare was the only guy that got it going. 13 points off the bench really kind of kept him afloat. But Kennesaw State has kind of kept Lipscomb at arm's length throughout much of this ball game. And early in the second half there, Kennesaw State leads it by 13. And, of course, if they win tonight, whoever comes out of this Liberty EKU game right. will be traveling to Kennesaw to meet the Owls on Sunday.
Now set to start the second half of play. Remember, we mentioned these two teams played a couple of great ball games early in the year. Eastern Kentucky beating Liberty. And they're building the Flames. A 10-point win over EKU here in this building. It was really a lot closer than that down the stretch. But we expect another fantastic finish here tonight. McGee handles the rock. Rose going to drive on Blanton. Off the window, no. The tip up and in from Preston. Yeah, I like that play. Just Kyle Rhodes driving hard to the basket when all the attention was not letting Darius get a three. And another yeah. offensive rebound by Liberty with Blake Preston tapping it in. Yeah, but that time is denied. Blanton getting the basketball. He ends up finding it. Now puts it on the deck. Behind the back dribble. Fades away. Oh, that is so tough. You think back to that last meeting between the two. Blanton. I think he was held at six or seven points in the first half. That's right. In the second half, he just made up his mind that he would not be stopped. Yeah. And he took over the game. Yeah, he said it. He just kind of put the team on his shoulders. Other guys weren't. Shots weren't falling. McGee, three, rattles out. Oh. Back tap to him. He'll try it again. Rattles out again. Liberty, another offensive board. Flames giving EKU kind of a That's taste right. of their own medicine. Now, road mid-ranger. That's off the mark. Gozart pulls the rebound. Three good looks for Liberty. That time just none of them would fall. EKU played much of the first half without their big man Isaiah Kozar. Picked up a couple of fouls. If they're able to, yeah, they are just all, always going to get Blaine the touch. Good cut. Yeah, Rob lays it in for two. Seven points now for Cooper Rob. We're seeing the difference he can make. Mention he wasn't on the floor the last time these teams played. Both on the offensive yeah. and certainly on the defensive end. He's been a factor. Yeah, he's just another guy you always have to worry about. Look at him. He's just really doing a good job on Darius McGee, chasing him everywhere he goes. Eight on the shot clock. Porter going to launch the deep one. That's all. Well off the mark. And you think back to that first half. How many shots for the Flames kind of left you scratching your head a little bit? Didn't get a lot of good looks. The defense certainly deserves credit for that. But also, for some that you don't typically see from this efficient Liberty offense. Blanton, again, gets in the paint. Oh, my, the teardrop falls for two. You can't say it enough, man. The guy just uses his body so well to create space to get him deep in that paint. If he's trying to get Shiloh Robinson in the ball game, you would assume his job will be to try to slow Blanton down. McKee up under, lays it off the glass for two. Yeah, I mean, they're content to kind of run everything through Blanton, and then you got guys like Moreno and Rob and Comer. Comer feeds you know what they do? They'll get guys spotted up around him. Poked away by Vincent with 12 on the shot clock. All right, now these were your impact players at the outset. Blanton at one end, <laughs> at the other end, Darius McGee. I mean, they were both first teamers. I'm not yeah. going to give you too much credit. It's not like you. <laughs> yeah, that was an easy call for me there. tonight. Yeah. Shot clock at eight. Comer hit a big three to beat the shot clock earlier. Drives it, lost it, and they say it'll stay with EKU. Flames can't believe it. Four on the shot clock. Let's get another look. Ah, it's close. Might have gone off the knee of Comer. Hard to tell there. They're going to have to hoist one quick. Rob, deep three. Front iron, offensive board, Blanton lays it in. You just can't relax yeah. for an instant. Yeah, you think you, you're in good shape because you get robbed to take a long kind of off-balance three. But somebody doesn't box out Blanton, and he will make you pay. Porter, open three ball. That's good. Yeah. 14 for Colin Porter. Yeah, he got the hop step right in, got great momentum. Into his shot. He got it over. Knifing his way through. Oh. And let him. He made that shot tougher than it needed to be. But he still got it to go. Did a huge 
sidestep. Finger rolled it back over his right. Okay, Green now lobs it down low. Tyler Robinson caught too far under the hoop. Warfield, corner three. That goes down. That is huge. They were clearly going to let Warfield get a free look. Took his time. Big time shot by Zay Warfield. He only averages three points a ball game. He gets three on one shot. Now Liberty's been scoring that, but they've got to get stops. I mean, Eastern Kentucky is scoring every time down the floor. They got Cozart and Rode in the post. Cozart much bigger than Kyle. Let's see if they can get him the basketball. I don't they, think they need to. They've also got the matchup here they like. Yeah. The cool. kick out. Comer and open three. Way too strong. There you and go. From the Flames. Yeah, that's what Liberty needs to do is get some stops. Rode leaves it to Warfield. Spins back and now will bring it back out to Darius McGee. Baseline takes it strong and finishes. We're all tied up at 46. A.W. Ralph Hamilton slowing things down, running a set here. I like that. Things got a little frantic. He wants to re reset his group. Tomer. Yeah, they want to get Cozart on the post. Cozart working on Kyle Road. Gets him in the oh, air. Nice and lays it in. Pretty move from the big thumb. Yeah, real nice up and under from Cozart. Just four points tonight from Cozart. We mentioned the foul trouble. McGee gives it to Warfield. They kick it, swing it around. Porter left open. Three ball batting. A new that? career high for Colin Porter. He's got 17. 17 in the biggest game of his career so far. Moreno saw him hit a big three before the break. Gives it up to Blanton. He backs it out. Sides it up. Shadow Robinson between the legs. Caught underneath the hoop. Good Five on so the shot clock. He'll shoot the three. That oh, goes oh, down. Oh, Back my, and forth we go. My goodness. These two programs throwing haymakers. And EKU leads. Right now, Naz, we were talking during the break. I'm not sure what the answer is <laughs> for Blanton if you're Liberty. You have tried. Three yes. different defenders. Yeah, none of that any luck. Size. Just hope he gets tired. Yeah, just, the at this point. <laughs> just no answer for Devontae Bland right now. A foul away from the ball. That may go on Leland Walker as he was trying to defend Colin Porter. And that'll get us to a media timeout. Colin Porter, we check in with Emily. Yeah, you might see a 5'9 point guard, but that's not what Coach McKay saw when he was recruiting. He noticed that every time he played, his team had a chance to win. It's not really scientific, but, uh, you know, the impact that he's had as a freshman at that size is pretty incredible. Liberty got a good look. Warfield just looked like he lost the handle on the basketball as he went in to lay it up. Yeah. So a golden opportunity. The Flames come away empty. EKU's made seven of nine shot attempts to begin the second half. Yeah. I mean, Walker going to try one. Oh, it looked good. And he got it. Hand, man. Leland Walker with eight. The two freshmen, Comer and Walker, combined for 18 tonight. Yeah, the script is flipped a little bit, Matt. Liberty's scoring now, but it's, it's the stops that are not happening for them. They're allowing EKU to shoot 80% in this half, Matt. Porter leans in, flips it up. In, out, and back through for the freshman. Again, they're scoring, but trading baskets. Yeah, this Liberty defense that was the best in the A-Sun this season. In fact, ninth in the country, this Liberty scoring defense, giving up just about 60 a ball game. EKU almost there already. Shoulder lowered, offensive foul on Leland Walker. That's number three. Yeah, it was just a young player reacting in the yeah. environment like this. The All the pressure like this. It's winner go yeah. home time. How will they react? So far, these young guys on both sides have been fantastic. They sure have. Hand off to McGee. Three ball. Left it short. Gets his own rebound. Into the defense. Lobs it up off the window for two. Wow. Off balance. 
The second Follow. attempt was a lot more difficult <laughs> sure than was. the first. Followed his shot. Made it count. Walker gives it up to Rob. Moreno, he's always a three-point yeah. guy that and he, the coaches mentioned. And he's really doing a nice job of not forcing shots. He's letting it come to him. But he's, you're right, man, he's always a threat. Five on the side clock. He'll force one now. Off the mark. Fight for the rebound. And it's grabbed by Warfield. That was Bodie Peeble. Yes. He got a hand in there and deflected it away from EKU. Yeah, and Zach Cleveland held his box out. McGee, through traffic, scoops, couldn't get it to fall. Yeah, I kind of like Darius. You and I have said that. Go off the dribble a little bit. EKU, Cooper Rob especially has done a good job really hounding him from three. Rob's turn to drive it now, spins into trouble. And Taya, it'll stay with EKU. Quick whistle on the jump ball there, and A.W. Hamilton not a huge fan. Yeah, and, and, and that one could have gone either way. There was some wrist. <laughs> there was some wrist involved in there as well as the ball. Blanton after a quick breather checks back in. The freshman Zach Cleveland matched up on him. And Cleveland deflects that one. They lost track of the basketball. Blanton finds it. And hits. Yeah, he, he, oh, he, he just located a finger. finger. Yeah. He just located a finger. Yeah. Cleveland's pinky. Yeah, they're not going to stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his his pinky is. You know what? Eric Strider, the trainer, yeah. literally just grabbed it yeah. and popped it right back in. He just popped in. it right back in, and he can stay out well. As easy as you or I shake hands, <laughs> he just put the finger back in place. Hey, Cleveland is not coming out for a dislocated finger. Cleveland I mean, was going <laughs> north and south. The pinky was going east. That's just an average practice, I think, for Zach Cleveland. Gives it up to Rhodes. Nice. Pulls up in the lane. Oh. Couldn't hit. The Flames have missed some from point blank range tonight. Yeah, that's hard. He got caught in that three foot, two foot area. Got to use the, the glass on there. It's hard to find the right touch. Once again, EKU manages to stay just in front despite a better offensive performance here in the second half yeah. from Liberty. And we talked about them always playing fast. They've done a great job with their pace tonight. Land lost it, got it to Rob. Three on the shot clock, yeah. back to Blanton. I'm not sure he's aware. Did he get it off? I think he got it off. Just it doesn't a, matter. Okay. He missed the rim. Yeah. yeah, going back to my thought, I, I really like EKU's pace. They're not trying to push it too fast. They're taking their opportunities, but on the half court, they're really running good offense, getting everybody involved, being patient, and they're getting great shots. Under 10 to play in this A-Sun semifinal. Kyle Rhodes going to initiate the offense, Blanton on it. Rhodes gets the screen, now trying to back Blanton down. McGee, step back, three ball on the way, bang! Man, so tough. 17 for McGee, we're tied up once again. Lanton hits the deck. Now the question, who put him there? And they're going to get Warfield on the whistle. Well, if you're EKU and, and A.W. Hamilton said this, McGee, this might be a fist fight. <laughs> we didn't know he'd have dislocations and, and all, all that we've had here. But, boy, it has been physical, and it has been everything we hoped it would be. Now they got Cleveland on Blanton. Blanton pulls up over the top of him, rims off. Tell you what, and that was foul underneath. That's going to go against Cozart, and that's number three. And they may take a look at this one, too. Anthony Eads, one of the officials, comes in and says, we might want to look at this one. Cozart came away holding his mouth yeah. like he got hit in the face. Warfield ripped it away, and then they're going to they're gonna look at his head to see if he threw his head back. I think he's just trying to stand up and get Cozart off him. So back to the monitor we go. You see Van Zant arguing his case, saying, man, I had 240 pounds on top of me. <laughs> trying to get him off, but we will see. Remember, we had to play earlier tonight. Capiti gave an elbow now away from the ball. They call that a common foul after review. Let's take a look. I'll tell you, Naz, 
I would not be shocked at all if they upgrade this on and give this to Vince Ann. I know what you're saying, and as a player, anyone who's played the game, you got somebody laying on top of you like that. It's your natural instinct. You get them off. But, man, anything to the shot to the head, neck yeah. area, they take incredibly seriously. Yeah, it looked like it was uh, Benzant's shoulder that caught the chin there of Cozart. So they're taking a long look at this one. They've seen the replay. They're going to get together and sort it out. I feel like every call at this point is so big. I thought I saw a common foul. No, nope, they say yeah. common on 50, so that's number three on Cozart. Yeah. You know what, Naz? And we've said this many times over the years. We will always err on the let them play side yeah, of things. Yeah, and so, again, if you call the one with Capiti a common foul, I think you got to call that one a common foul. I think certainly either one maybe could have been a flagrant one, but I like the ref's decision. Let the guys play. This is the semifinal of the conference tournament. Liberty with the basketball tied up, and McGee's foul on the three-point attempt, and now he's grabbing at his cap. He shot that, Naz. His shoulders were square with his sideline. He had... That's yeah. just, no one else shoots that, but he was able to draw the foul. Yeah, Rob, Rob's legs kind of got into Darius McGee's legs. And are they calling it a, a two or a three now? I think this official of the basket is signal three. Yeah. So the foul on Rob, McGee gets the free throw to fall. He has 18 now. Ten of those coming in the second half. One more for Darius. McGee coming off 29 points on Tuesday night against Bellerman. 26 of those coming in the first half. As he had nine threes in the game. Been a very different story tonight. Has not come nearly as easy for him. He has 19 in those two of three free throws. Put the Liberty Flames up by two. A whistle away from the ball. They're going to get Benzant on the foul. Yeah, again, that's careless by, by Joseph Benzant. He's too good a defender. That he just sort of was grabbing Moreno before the ball screen even ever arrived. Second foul on Benzant. You know where it's going. That's right. Everything's going can through. You stop it. Going through number Blanton. 10. Jack stepping, oh, knocking it down. 18 for Blanton. That is game reminds me of Paul Pierce. Yeah. He kind of runs that old man game. Big body, soft touch. Little zone here going on, Matt. See if the Flames recognize it. Blanton. He was out there on Porter. Now Vendant gives it back to Warfield. Vendant in the corner. Going to try to back his way in. Stuck looking for help. Road to the corner. Warfield open three. Way strong and the rebound pulled by Moreno. Yeah, good idea by EKU. They were guarding the kind of the certified shooters. They're going to make yeah. guys like Vendant and Warfield. Right. When you get some Vendant, shots. Warfield, and Cleveland out there together. Like, you'll just take your chances with those three shooting three. Blanton oh, watches oh. the triple. No, <laughs> fight for the rebound, and Cleveland kept it alive for the Flames to gather. And you can see Blanton's just feeling it, and that three looked good. It didn't fall for him, but he's a guy you got to watch all the way out there, too. Darius McGee on the bench, now making his way to the scores table. Colin Porter had that one halfway down. Fight for the rebound, and it will go back to EKU. The Liberty bench can't believe it, Matt. EKU basketball, Liberty Arena rising to its feet. Seven minutes to play. Comer turns the corner, gets in the paint, had it blocked. Yeah, took it in among two guys, and I think Kyle Rhodes got the block. But I'll tell you, anytime Blanton isn't taking the shot, yeah. if you're Liberty, you're probably <laughs> pretty thrilled. He's been unstoppable in the second half. McGee, three ball, top of the key. Man, Gary McGee really worked 
and use that ball screen for perfection. We got Cooper Rob kind of on his on his hip, on his back. EKU has had an answer all night long. Do they have one here? Trailing by three. They gotta stay with Moreno. Ten on the shot clock. Yeah. Comer calls. Yeah. Get out of his court. Between the legs, drives, pulls up, touch, shot, off the mark, on the deck, who comes away with it, and it will stay with EKU. Boy, if you're Liberty, you get those chances where Blanton doesn't hit, you have got to find a way to come away with the basketball. They do not. Yeah, it, it was an odd rebound. It just sort of went straight down. Now Moreno launches a three. That's too strong. And the Flames come away with it. Kozark hit the deck hard. He's kind of limping a little bit, but it looks like, looks like he'll be okay. So the Flames get a stop. Chance to add to their advantage. McGee knifing through the defense. Corner three coming. Yes, sir! Colin Porter! Onions, baby! What a huge game Colin Porter is having. Colin Porter with a few words for Tayshaun Comer as he makes his way to the bench. And the kid is showing remember well they the last time these teams met they fell down double digits in the second half and then stormed back to really make a run at it late they are far from out of this thing yeah they're going right to Blanton they need a basket they feed the big man Kozart oh. powers up and over road Kozart just six points on the night but a big bucket there to silence the crowd for the time being yeah I like the decision Everything was planned. They get the post a touch. Kozart finishes. Gives it to Rose. The pass inside the block from Blanton. So a big defensive stop for EKU as we're under five to play. It's all running through number 10 right now. Moreno gives it back to him. Pulls up the mid-range game. Left it short. Bodies hit the deck and a foul going against EKU. It is getting physical <laughs> on the glass right now between these two. Yeah, and, that, and that's okay. I mean, it's clean. This guy's going for the rebound. Listen, it's win or go home time, guys. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> yeah. You leave it all out there at this point. Is that one called on Moreno? Five team fouls on EKU, just two on the Flames here in the second half. Liberty will walk it up. Blanton, that's up on Porter. Yes, yeah, sometimes those switches make them susceptible, but right now it's been okay. They swing at Porter again. One more time. Yes, sir! <laughs> he is feeling the match. 25 for Colin Porter. My goodness. Liberty with its largest lead of the night. Rob on the wing, looking to beat Kozar. The size mismatch on road. And he's fouled going up. Not the worst decision if you're Liberty in That's that right. situation. Kozart, just a 56% free throw shooter. He'll shoot two on the other side. Liberty leads it. Meanwhile, here in Lynchburg, Isaiah Kozart at the free throw line. Misses the first. Struggles from the strike. He has one more coming. And you get to this stage of the game. Boy, if you're EKU, you're trailing by seven. Empty possessions are not what you want. Yeah. Because Liberty is going to slow it down. Yeah, and they're a team, though, that, that thrives on pressure. So you see some full court. You always got to be ready for your Liberty. They could spring a trap on you. And now a foul. That goes against Yukamato. Yeah, he's, again, he's got to be smarter than that. That's 16 fouls, so Liberty will be shooting the rest of the way. So you got to play strong with the ball. Road to inbound. And Dent has it. It's been McGee and Porter in this ball game that have carried the offensive load. McGee, the deep three. That goes down! Unbelievable! My 25 for Darius McGee! My goodness. He 
He's feeling it, Matt. He has shaken off that first half. Blake, full head of steam, kicks out. They can show you this. That one too strong. The offensive board for Blanton. Loose on the deck. And a foul, they say, on the floor. I believe they're going to get Colin Porter on the whistle. And that is his second. You just talked about it. And I mean, Blanton's right there. But that shot was pure. Those are those shots that for anyone else, it's yeah. a bad shot. For Darius McGee, it's routine. Rob, he oh, 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 oh. knocks it down. Big answer from the fifth-year senior. New shot by Rob, and again, it is a result of an offensive rebound by EKU. Exactly right. Picked up his dribble, got to get it over. Bro, looking for help, found it, and Zan. And get it across the timeline. Under three minutes to go in the ball game. Liberty the six-point lead. McGee holding, burning some of that clock. Has it deflected and taken away. There's, yeah, there's the result of the pressure and the trapping. Comer, and that's going to be a goaltend. Off the glass and then the block for Rhodes. So Tayshawn Comer, only the third turnover of the night for Liberty, and it quickly turns into two points the other way. They're slowing it down, Naz, yeah. and they're getting out of your offensive flow. In that possession, it looked like Liberty was just kind of out of their offensive flow, and it led to a turnover. Yeah, and the pressure, you know, caused the turnover. Liberty got careless with their spacing, picking up the dribble, and good job by EKU to get points out of it. Porter. Got the bigger Luka Mato. He may be able to take him off the dribble. Gets a screen from Cleveland. Now has the Blanton switch. Whoa, Cleveland wasn't looking for the basketball. Fortunate to have it. McGee. No, that's ill-advised shot. A lot of the rebound and the putback. Oh, back. my goodness. Shiloh Robinson what? with an effort play. His first points of the night. And what? they are huge. What awareness by Shiloh Robinson. That thing came off the top of the back of the shot clock. Blanton now tries to answer. Left it short. Fight for the ball. If you're Liberty, so play strong, make good passes, don't get anything wild, but then you got to get a good shot. Boy, they barely got that across, or did they? They did not. 10 second call. Yeah, 19 on the shot clock. So, so there's the turnover. Yeah. We've seen two now in the last minute or so from the Flames, and it's leaving the door open for EKU. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't always have to be a steal or a deflection. That time, just good, solid. Positioning defense makes the Flames get the 10-second violation. You look out there on the floor right now. Zach Cleveland on the floor, a true freshman, has come off the bench for Liberty. Not always played major minutes, but in the biggest moment of this game, they're leaving him out there on the floor. The officials just making sure the game clock was accurate. So here we go, 120 to play, three-point ball game. Number 10 with the ball in his hand. He's going to drive on Robinson, lowers the shoulder, and they get him for a block. Just the fifth team foul on Liberty. That foul on the floor. It's Robinson out of a, of a semifinal this goes for a conference championship. Moreno gives it right to Blanton. Hit the big three a moment ago. Let's see if he gets yeah. another one in him. Comer steps back in on the shot clock. Right back to Blanton. Creates some space. No. Three ball off the mark. The rebound grabbed by Kyle Road. They're going to have to come after it. They're going to have to shoot some gaps, maybe. Darius McGee with the ball in his hands. I think 
Think of all the big yeah. shots he's made in his career. He has a chance to hit a dagger here. Drives. Has deflected. Caught by Rose. Pump fake. Three ball. <laughs> what a huge basket by Kyle Rose. When everything was on the line, Matt, the senior. Homer gets the basketball, brings it yeah. into the front court. Yeah, they want to get Moreno a look. Good switching by Liberty. Homer. Yeah, there's in the Homer. Lane, okay. Lays it in for two. That used about 11 seconds. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Liberty did a great job covering the shooters and that they were switching, which I like the decision to switch everything. So now Liberty takes a timeout. And good job by Comer. Uh, that's what they need. He need a quick basket. He can do anything. Kyle Rowe to inbound. A whistle and offensive foul. An offensive foul on Liberty. Darius McGee whistled for the foul. And that's the one thing you cannot do in that situation. Yep, they could have called a timeout. They, they, they... Good defense by EKU. And now they, they may go review it. Or maybe they're just checking on the game clock. They're just putting a some time back on the clock yeah that that's that's the one thing that that EKU needed that Liberty did not need to have happen so now Eastern Kentucky with the ball under their own hoop 20 seconds to go yeah it's still a two possession you get game. a bucket here and you really turn the heat up on the plane yeah you gotta stay with Rob Rob three ball off the mark you gotta get the rebound. rebound McKay comes away with it waits for the foul to come it does and now he'll have a chance to seal it at the line. Yeah, good job. Kyle Rowe getting the team together at the free throw line. Hey, EKU got a really good look. Rob coming off that curl. Darius McGee did a real nice job there, you know, getting a contest, getting a hand in his face. Maybe the biggest thing, though, was that rebound. The sixth of the night for Darius McGee. One of the smallest guys on the floor. And he's got six boards to go along with his 25 yeah, points. Matt, and four assists. Like, again, when things were slow and labored for him in the first half, he's doing other things. He's rebounding. He's getting other guys involved. And, Matt, the second half, man, what a champion. What a warrior. He gets them both. 27 for McGee. Comer no. brings it up. No fouls at your liberty. EKU got to go quick. Moreno, the three. It's pure with 2.7 left. They're not going home no. easy now. They're Great playing shot. until the clock says zeros. Yeah, Moreno. Again, we've talked about him a lot. He didn't get a lot of looks tonight. Five across the baseline. Rose gets it into McGee. He's fouled quickly by Rob, and it'll send Darius back yeah. to the line. What a game, Naz. Oh, my goodness. We, I mean, we talked before, you know, when we showed up two hours before tip off the day. This we is knew. going to be a brawl tonight yeah. in the best of ways. Yeah, we're looking at that. The line was 12, and we just Unreal. laughed at yeah. it. We're like, that's ridiculous. It's not going to be that. We knew it was going to be a one or two possession game. My goodness, EKU, that came out. What a, what a, what a great game they played. One more free throw coming for the A-Sun player of the year. And did he ever play like it in the second half? He sure did. Held the eight points in the first half. He finishes with 29. And I'm telling you, Devontae Blanton did everything humanly possible he could do for the Colonels. It just wasn't quite enough. So for the fourth time in five years, the Liberty Flames are headed to the A-Sun championship.